What's up, everybody? David Kurz here, Kurz Real Estate, and once again, bringing to you one more speaker coming to the Real Talk Conference, Mr. Jose Baez, the one and only criminal defense attorney on the planet, period, in the story. What's up, brother? Thanks for coming and doing this with me. Thanks for the uh, compliments. <laughs> I come here all day for that. So I put a picture of him on the website, and I said, you know, Jose Baez is coming to speak, and like six people call me right away, and they're like, I need him for something. So I immediately shot him like five to six referrals right off the bat, which is great. I love doing that. That's amazing. And, and it, I think it's a testament of what you've done, who you are, and where you are right now. Because there are a million attorneys out there I could have posted a photo of, and it would have been by the wayside, right? Uh, but the fact that people see your photo, they know who you are, they know what you've done, they know the success that you've put together. Um, and so they say, that's, that's the guy I want to have on my side right now for the situation that I happen to be in. Well, you know, all of that comes from a lot of hard work and, and uh, working on not only the law side, but the business side as well, making sure people recognize my brand. And it's especially hard to have a national brand that's Hispanic. Right. And I, we don't necessarily see that very much here in Miami because everybody's Hispanic. Everybody's Hispanic. Even and Robert Rubenstein's Hispanic. <laughs> 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 yeah, I guess so, right? <laughs> um, so, but, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that, that I'm, I'm really very proud of because there are barriers. Right. And we don't recognize them in this small pond that we have. And it's actually, you know, no one could... I think I'll be the only one that calls Miami a small pond because it's such a huge city. But in, in all actuality, there's, my practice really isn't just based in Miami. I mean, it's, it's, it's a national practice. And to do that and to get out in, in, into, those, uh, into those other markets, it's extremely difficult when you have a Z at the, last, at, at the end of yeah, your name. Of course. So, um, you know, there, there, there's quite a few things that, that I think... Uh, have it hasn't always been easy but fortunately once you get in once you get in the door you're in yeah you're in the club and, and, and it's almost like I think there's a lot that that's to be said about that because I don't you know if 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 I know anything about your story you weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth you don't come from a wealthy family you didn't have wealthy families in the uh, just running to you the moment you got your license you worked hard for it and and you said something very important because you know, we're going to have a lot of real estate professionals at the Real Talk Conference. We're going to have um, a lot of business professionals at the Real Talk Conference. And I think probably the most important thing that you said in here is it took a lot of hard work focusing on not only the law side of it, but the business side of it. Because law is a trade, right? It, at the end of the day, you went to school and you earned a trade, right? Um, it's like being a carpenter, right? Or a general contractor or whatever. You go to, you get a license and you learn a trade, but it doesn't mean you're the best general contractor on the planet. Let's face it, we live in Miami, we know that, right? So it's about the work that you put into it, the, the business platform that you put together, the marketing that goes behind it, the brand that you develop, right? And then now all of that's great, and then it's also the proof in the pudding. Do you do a good job? Well, yeah, I, I'm a big believer that there are three keys to success. And one is... You have to have the desire not to suck. Right. Okay. <laughs> and, and, the and you desire know, not to fail, right? Yeah, right. And a lot of people have that. Okay. So then you go to the next step, which is you have to be willing to put the work in. And if you're willing to put the work and maybe just a little bit extra, that, that's, that really does carry you a significant weight. But I know I'm not telling you anything you haven't heard already. But the third thing that I, I don't think it's uh, spoken about enough is having the patience to see it through. A lot of people have the dream, they start something, they don't finish it. Then they're looking for instant gratification. Correct. And, and you really, it, it's not an overnight success. Right. And even though I had, uh, I had success fairly early on in my career, it really wasn't early on in my career. There were a lot of struggles to get to the point where I needed to be to be able to put myself in a position to be successful. Uh, so, so it's one of those things that really patience... What? Uh, at, at, at a, a certain level of performing, it really does, it, it, it's a key component. It's and a not key only that, there's, there's, the, there's the pre-prep, which is four years of college, two years of law school, uh, studying for the bar, passing the bar, 
than actually getting hired somewhere and so forth and so on. All of that prepep that takes eight years on an, an, a, maybe a minimum or average to even just get the ball rolling. Well, I'll tell you, my story is one of the road less traveled. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't know, uh, but it, 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 some people do, that I, I dropped out of high school in the ninth grade. Oh, so wow. I, I did, I took the GED route. Um, I stumbled many, many times in life. Uh, I, I joined the Navy when I was 17. Hurrah. Uh, and I, I, I basically, you know, it was one of those things that I didn't see the light first time around. And maybe not the second or third or fourth. And even when I accomplished certain things, I was knocked back down. Uh, and, you know, life throws you all kinds of, of curves. Um, and, and I can tell you, once I got my license to be a lawyer, uh, actually getting my license was a mission in and of itself. I was denied admission to the Florida Bar the first time I applied because of uh, financial irresponsibility. And uh, I had to wait eight years before I could reapply. So, wow. Yeah, I mean, it was. So my, my eight year average is really like a no, 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 no. It's, 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 it's beyond that. I mean, it, it, it was, like I said, it was the road less traveled. And one of the things that I, I learned was having that patience. I held on to my dream, knowing it was going to be difficult to accomplish, knowing it wasn't going to come tomorrow, or maybe next month, or maybe next year, right. or the year after that. Uh, it was something that I, and, and seeing all my classmates from law school go on and have successful careers and not being envious of their success, uh, but one thing's for certain, once I got my shot, once the coach put me in, yeah. um, I skyrocketed past all of them. And but I, I, I didn't know that that was going to happen in my career. I didn't know that, but you except had, right you here. Had, you had the patience to wait. You did what you had to do. You pursued your dream. And then you, once you were in the door, you didn't, you, you didn't mess around. Like no. you said, okay, I'm here. Now it's time to play ball, right? Like, yeah. you know, like you said, when the coach puts you in, you didn't, you didn't foul up. Like you hit a home run. You was in, you know? Yeah, I mean, my biggest, uh, one of my first big case came three years after being admitted into the bar. And I caught a lot of flack for that. I caught a lot of grief because... Many people thought I, was, I didn't know what I was doing, that I was too new of a lawyer, and I knew my past struggles. They didn't. Yeah. I knew how much hard I had. Everyone they is didn't. quick to talk about you when you're succeeding. Oh, everyone's quick to talk about you without knowing who you are yeah. and without knowing what's inside of right. you. And, uh, and I think that's a, that's, that's a big thing that hopefully uh, people who, who go to this conference will be able to say to themselves, okay, what do I have inside of me? And what do I have to offer? And right. how willing am I? How, how much do I believe in it to make it all happen? So let's talk about something real quick because um, there are a lot of people watching that say uh, Jose Baez has had quite a few great cases that has put him in the limelight. And so what's it like dealing with the limelight? Because there's positive that comes from it and there's a lot of negative that comes your way being in the limelight, no matter who you are, right? I mean, if you're an A-list celebrity, the minute you get drunk at a bar, that's it. You're in the Enquirer, you know? Yeah. So, and, you're, and, and you're having an alien's baby, you know? It's like, you know, people, so what's, yeah. what's that like? Because there's so many people out there in today's day and age, and I'm not going to lie to you, including myself, that I want to be so successful that everyone knows my name, right? I, that's, that's me. I want to be the Nike swoosh, right? And so... That being said, that would put me in a position where I'm consistently in the limelight. And I think anybody watching this knows that about me. But for those of them watching, what is it like being in the limelight and being able to maintain, being able, because it's one thing getting your foot in the door, right? How many people do we know get their foot in the door, do a bang up job, kill it in all kinds, and then all the pressure comes in and they fall apart? Well, you heard the saying, be careful what you wish for. Exactly. Um, so... You know, it, when you're in the spotlight and, and you're high profile, one of the things that a lot of people really don't understand is you can do 99 positive things, but it's that one negative thing that you do that everybody right. will remember. Everyone remembers. And, and there's no better story than knocking someone off the top. So, 
you know, it, I can tell you it's not for the faint of heart. I've had uh, many difficult things uh, said about me. And I never really cared as much when they spoke of me professionally because I can address that. I can attack right. that. Right. I can prove those people wrong. Right. But when it gets personal, right. that you can't, you can't really. It's hard to. Uh, all you have is, is your word, the people you love beside you, and, and those in your inner circle who really know the truth and right. know who you are and what you are. So, uh, you know, it's being in the spotlight is not for the faint of heart. Right. And I can tell you that. You have to be willing to accept that. And that is the price you pay. So before you decide to, to venture off into that, in, into that orbit, sure, you, get, you have to remember that. I get a good heart. You, know, you, <laughs> have, you, you, you good have to remember heart. that. Is that, a, is that a good enough trade-off? Now, right. many people can have tremendous success and not be in the spotlight. Right. And many people go through that and go through life and, and have this incredible success, and no one knows who they are. Right. And, and they like it that way because the second... Uh, the lights come on and, and, and things get personal. Uh, it, it's it really is it, it a gets ugly. it's an it's an ugly attack. It's an ugly attack. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate your time. I'm looking forward to so so format for Real Talk conferences. We we have at least ten speakers and four panels that are going to be hitting the stage on August 15th. Um, registration is at 7 a.m. Uh, Real Talk conference starts promptly at 9 a.m. Breakfast, lunch will be served. There will be cocktails and a DJ after the event because, after all, it is Miami. Um, so we want to make sure that you guys are there. But what I do want to say is we have chosen three to four speakers that will have a moment on the stage and then a personal Q&A with me. And what we're going to do is the day of the conference, we're going to launch a hashtag on Twitter, and you'll be able to ask questions through the Twitter hashtag. Um, so while I'm on the stage with Jose Baez, I'm going to ask him to have his time on the stage, talk to you about what it takes to not only build a business, have the patience for a business, but then once you hit it, once your, do your foot is in the door, how to keep sustainability, right? How to stay in the business and not fall apart due to the pressures that being an entrepreneur brings to, to someone and someone's family and someone's personal life. So. Um, after all of that, we're going to sit down with Jose one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to have a Q&A, um, and I'll allow you guys to bring questions to the table through Twitter, and I appreciate you guys watching today. Thank you for doing this with me, and thanks for coming to Real Talk Conference, first of all. My pleasure. I'm excited. Uh, me too. So thanks, everybody, for watching today. Make sure to get your tickets, realtalkcon.com. That's realtalkcon.com. We have very limited time to lift off. Get your tickets today. Get a table for your team. Bring your clients. Bring your fellow entrepreneurs. Make this shit happen, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you soon.